Hello everybody, I am Gustavo Tolosa, the plant-powered pianist, and I am thrilled to be here in Chef AJ's uh, show every month, the last or the fourth Sunday of every month. And since this month was my birthday, I decided to do something fun. And so this is called Beethoven, Bach and Beans. I think beans are a wonderful food for many, many reasons. And um, I decided I will be, I would do a BBB, all B. So Beethoven, Bach and beans. As I show you how to make some simple meals with beans, we will be listening to some piano music that I will play, music by Beethoven and Bach, some of the greatest composers in music history. So I hope that you enjoy this um, cooking demo. I specialize in simple meals. After 11 years of being whole food plant-based, I know how to put together simple but delicious meals, and that's what I'm all about. I run the seven-day detox and reset program online. It is fun. We meet twice a day for a week online live or recorded as a, as a replay, and I take you literally by the hand and I show you how to make simple meals and to make this program sustainable and rewarding. So let's go and get started with Beethoven, Bach, and Beans. Okay, meatless uh, meatballs with, uh, with black beans, one cup, half a cup of cooked brown, uh, short, uh, rounded, uh, rice so this is um, it's usually called yamani and it is kind of like this it's round shaped and it's short okay um it's, it's and, and it's brown rice that's half a cup of cooked okay and then i have a tablespoon of chopped uh, parsley and then here is two tablespoons of garbanzo flour or it could be um, whole wheat flour, or it could be one tablespoon of each, or two tablespoons of of, um, of um, whole wheat flour. Either way, if you uh, want uh, to use just the two tablespoons of garbanzo flour, that's okay as well. All right, so let's get started. We will go ahead and put in a high speed blender the beans, the black beans, and the brown rice. Here goes the flour. The parsley. one tablespoon of garlic powder, but it could also be fresh chopped garlic, a tablespoon of smoked paprika, half teaspoon of white pepper, half teaspoon of salt substitute or salt. You could even go with one teaspoon as well a teaspoon of white balsamic vinegar, or it could be uh, aquafaba, which is the liquid from the garbanzo beans. And now we blend. You may need to add a little water, a little bit at a time. We will, that way it will actually blend better.
Mm. It actually smells very good. It doesn't have, I don't think, enough liquid. So we'll just keep stirring and adding, adding a little bit of water to this. We need to end up with a nice paste here. All right, so this is what it looks like, okay? And uh, we're preheating the oven at 400. If you want to, you could use an air fryer, all right? That's another possibility. I'm just going to use the regular oven and we will start forming, uh, you know, like meatballs. And um, so as you can see, I changed the mixture to another bowl where I could add more chickpea flour to thicken it a little because that, uh, so I really, uh, I uh, recommend that you do this in a blender. I think, I mean, in a food processor, I think it would work better. Okay, but uh, here we go. It's a little thicker now. So now I can, I can form the, yeah, that worked. Okay, so if that happens to you, uh, just add a little more flour. Look at that, isn't that great? And it smells very good. So, we will see how many I end up with. I'm trying to make them the same size. And like I said, you could also uh, make, for example, noodle, uh, spiralized noodles, noodle zucchini. I mean, noodles, um, what I wanted to say was zucchini noodles that you could then use a really delicious tomato sauce and some uh, steamed veggies to put on top, and then you could use these uh, meatless <laughs> meatballs. And uh, like I said, you could also use them with rice. You could eat them with um, sauteed wok vegetables, with rice, anyway. Uh, the imagination is the limit here. So very nice. Okay, we'll see how they come, how they come out once they're cooked. All right, so I ended up with 12. So this could be for either two or three people. And uh, while we, um, but, uh, you know, while we cook these, either in the oven or in the air fryer, we, um, I'm going to get ready for the next recipe, and in the meantime, we'll listen to some Beethoven.
Okay, so on to our vegan mayonnaise, which you can put on, uh, let's say, lettuce wraps if you want, or even if you make a um, sandwich, let's say, with pumpernickel bread, that is one of the healthiest, you can do that. Um, you can use it in any place where you would use mustard. You can use it as a thickener for some uh, salad dressing. So here we go. We're going to put one cup of some uh, type of white, uh, white um, beans and we will put a tablespoon of lemon juice, a tablespoon of lemon juice, and then a teaspoon or actually like half a teaspoon of, um, this is Dijon mustard and tahini. I, I think it will need some kind of, a little bit of fat. And, uh, but of course this is healthy. Uh, it's not like, let's say a free oil. And we will, so we'll use that. There you go. And we will use uh, also some of the of the liquid that came from the beans with a little bit there and see how that goes. And if you use salt, this is where you would add some salt or a salt substitute. So I'm going to use Benson's table tasting, but you can use any other. I would put about a teaspoon. Okay, and let's start the blending procedure here so that it can be very creamy. Let's kind of move it around okay, a little bit. The consistency looks good. I don't want to add too much, too much liquid to this, if possible, because I want it to be creamy. Okay, it is time for the taste test. This is very firm and crisp, and we'll see. Here we go. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. Crisp on the outside creamy on the inside, rich, but um, mm, definitely a very good, uh, very good recipe. Give it a try. And let's try the vegan mayonnaise and see how this one turned out. It is creamy. We could eat it actually with this, but I'm just going to eat it, to try it by itself and see the flavor. Okay, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, that Dijon mustard and the lemon juice. That's what makes this taste great. Very creamy. Oh yeah, this can definitely be a mayonnaise for many different uses. And um, okay, let's move on. And I hope you will try these. And uh, please, if you haven't, help me out here by visiting my YouTube channel 
and uh, subscribing to it, clicking on the little bell. It really helps me to continue making the free videos. My YouTube. Uh, my YouTube channel is under my name, Gustavo Tolosa, but it is also under my business name, Plantemus. Plant, P-L-A-N-T-E-M-U-S. All right, let's keep, let's keep cooking. Okay, so now on to the delicious, delicious polenta and greens. Uh, dish which is very simple and it can be eaten as lunch dinner breakfast I love it for breakfast because it includes greens and beans so in a hot nonstick skillet we will put one cup of chopped onion one cup of red bell peppers and three chopped garlic cloves. I'm saving one of the garlic cloves for cooking the polenta later on. We are make, first making the topping here, and we will cook this on medium high or high heat for about four minutes. If it's not sticking, don't add water. The onion is releasing enough liquid that we don't need it right now, but if you did, then uh, add one or two tablespoons of water or, or, or um, sodium-free um, vegetable broth, but only if needed. It's not needed yet, and I may not need it. Some onions are more juicy <laughs> than others, and so this is now on high heat, and I have about two more minutes to go and then we will add the rest of the ingredients, which are two cans of diced tomatoes, 16 ounces each, one can of pinto beans or uh, red beans, rinsed, that equals one and a half cups, okay? So we will add it in just a minute. All right, so here are the two cans of 14 and a half ounce each of diced tomatoes. And one 15 ounce can of beans. I decided to put red beans, but pinto beans would be great. As usual, the color of this food is just beautiful, not to mention the aroma. Now we will add some smoked paprika and red um, flakes pepper, one fourth of a teaspoon of crushed red pepper, and a half teaspoon of smoked paprika. You could go with more if you like. I really like smoked paprika, so I think I'm going to go ahead and actually add more now that I see the volume. I'm just going to eyeball it and maybe go ahead and just put a whole teaspoon. This is all up to you. Another thing that I like, uh, and this recipe, by the way, I got it from the Forks Over Knives magazine. And as you can tell, I'm just changing a few little things. Like it, it's, I thought it's too, too little of the smoked paprika. And I love oregano, and it doesn't call for oregano, but I'm going to put about a teaspoon also of oregano. And that's about, okay, so that's it.
and finally the greens okay so you can get frozen kale frozen spinach frozen chard i guess you could even get frozen broccoli but um, the actual recipe calls for frozen kale and it calls for a 16 ounce bag of frozen kale i got frozen spinach so that's what I, I am putting there and um what i'm going to do so that this <laughs> spinach um, will melt is put the lid on this pan go to a medium really high medium heat there is enough juice in here that it will not stick, so I'm not going to worry about that. And I will cook it and basically until the, uh, the kale or the spinach is thawed and, um, and or wilted. So we'll be back. Very good. While this is cooking, we will get started with the actual polenta or grits. And uh, I will move this pan to the back and bring the bigger pan to the front. This looks just absolutely delicious and it's almost done. Actually, it is done. And you will need a 32 ounce carton of vegetable broth that is obviously oil free and sodium free. I don't have it, so basically I could put some, some herbs here and make it kind of like the vegetable broth. I have adobo seasoning. And I'm just going to put a little bit, like a teaspoon, just to give it some flavor of uh, what would be the vegetable broth and I will put the other chopped garlic clove in here this is basically so that the polenta will also have some other flavor although a plain polenta is very very delicious either way so we will bring this to a boil and when it's boiling we're just going to gradually put the um, polenta and also in the green mixture here we need to add one or two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and we will put the lid so that the flavors continue to mix. Once this is boiling, we will start adding the polenta. Just be aware, you might wanna have some hot water nearby because sometimes the polenta becomes too thick and you need to add a little bit more water. The broth is almost boiling, so I'm going to start adding the polenta. This is instant polenta. Don't worry if you don't find instant, use regular. It'll just take a little longer to cook. The instant will take either three minutes, about three minutes, no more. The other may take up to 10. This is one and a half cups you want to add it gradually so the lumps will not form and you want to have a long uh, spoon because it will start to splatter and you don't want to get burned now i will reduce the heat to low so that it won't splatter too much or a, but you do want to add it gradually otherwise you may end up with lumps and uh, you want it to be you really want this mixture to be very creamy i'll show you in just a minute once i'm almost done adding the polenta 
gradually and you want it to be uh, creamy and not runny uh, it could be a little bit thicker than creamy that's that is up to each person's taste if you have leftovers then the polenta becomes hard and so when you want to eat it again sometimes or most of the times you need to add half a cup or so of hot water and stir it again and then it it becomes creamy again okay those rolls of polenta already cooked that they sell at the market are not good for this that's more like to bake it and but um, for this uh, for this meal we need we need to be able to spread it and the other one is like a kind of like sausage really and, and it's hard and so you can slice it and stuff but you can't spread it on a platter or in a plate or on a bowl okay so it's almost I'm going to go ahead and finish it. And now, here, this is going to take no more than two minutes, okay, because this is instant. And even though this is in a low heat, the lowest possible, you can see how it starts to, well, no, now, it, now it's not going to do it, which is better. I don't want it to splatter all over the place, but, if it gets too hot, it will, and there you go. And then you really need to start, you need to stir it almost constantly. Don't don't cover it and, and go and come back later because it might burn. So it's just to, and if you continue to stir it, it will, it will, it will be that creaminess that we want. Look at this, this is kind of the, Look at this. This is kind of like the consistency that we want. Um, so you can tell that uh, if it's, you know, you, you will be able to tell that it's when it's becoming too thick. It's almost there for me. So what I can do now is put a lid on this. Okay, I turned off the heat. It is done. I will keep it hot. Um, there with by putting a lid on maybe letting it rest for like a couple two or three minutes that's the platter we will use souvenir de la fête and uh, of course you don't have to do it on a platter you can just do individual uh, portions and just get a nice bowl and put some let me see for presentation purposes this would be good if you don't have to present it, you can just put some polenta in this bowl, and then on top of the bowl, you will put, on top of the polenta, you will put the greens and uh, add any salt or pepper or salt substitute and enjoy the polenta. For my video here, we will go ahead and use a fancier presentation. And the time has come, let's, Go ahead and start spooning the polenta on this nice platter. This is if I was going to have guests and put this as a kind of a centerpiece on the table. And you may wonder, okay, so where are the beans? Well, <laughs> yeah, the beans are in the mixture because today's webinar or today's cooking demo is Beethoven, Bach and beans. And so um, this has beans and, uh, and this two of my, some of my favorite foods, beans and polenta, they couldn't get any better. So that's, I hope you enjoyed the Beethoven Piece, which is uh, one of his piano sonatas, and that was the, the first movement. 
And okay, so here we go. What I'm going to do is just do a little like indentations like that so that I can put the, the, the green mixture on it. You will love this. Let's move the camera here. I have some lemon slices to also put around it and use it. All right, so here we go. Let's put this wonderful, wonderful mixture on the polenta. You will probably have some leftover and that is great actually, because the, just like I'm putting this over polenta, you can put this over rice, you can put this over mashed potatoes, you can put this over a baked sweet potato or a baked potato, you can put it over quinoa. So you can use this in many different ways. As a side dish as well, you could just eat it by itself. Okay, so look at that. Let's add some tomato, I mean, not tomato, some of this uh, slices of lemon to just kind of give it a finishing touch. And those people who want to sprinkle, you know, to want to squeeze some lemon juice will be able to do so. Look at that. Isn't that a beauty? Well, I hope that you will try this. And now as we get ready for the last dish, a little bit of Bach is going to come in very beautiful. <laughs> so let's listen to some Bach and we'll get ready for the last recipe of the day. The next recipe is a green cabbage and white bean soup. This recipe is also from the uh, 
plant uh, from the Forks Over Knives magazine, and um, it makes about eight cups. And uh, what we're going to do is put in a large pot um, about a fourth of a cup of water, and then we will put two pounds of green cabbage, cored and cut into one inch pieces. Okay, it's about four cups. And so here is the cabbage. To this, we will add one cup of finely chopped leek. one cup of chopped carrots, six cloves of garlic chopped, one bay leaf, one and a half teaspoons of Italian seasoning, We will cover this and let it cook. We will um, lower the heat to medium. And this is going to release water as it cooks. And this is a non-stick pot. We will cover it and let it cook for 10 minutes. Every now and then I will check and if I need to add water, it will be about two tablespoons at a time. But uh, what we want to do is make sure that the carrots are tender. About 10 minutes have gone by. I really did not need to add water, but remember that you were, uh, it's better if you um, stir it every few times, add a little water if needed. The carrots are getting soft. So next we will add a can of white beans. That's one and a half cups, rinsed, okay? And then one fourth cup of tomato sauce. Just to clean it a little, I'll just add a little water. And now we need to add six cups of water. Let's give it a good stir. And so the heat is at the, at a medium heat and we will stir it and actually we will not cover and we will cook it uncovered for about seven minutes or until it's becoming uh, thick. And at that point we will continue with the last step. About 10 minutes actually have gone by. We will take the bay leaf out and you can see how it thickened, which is what we want. And finally, we will add the one tablespoon of rice, brown rice vinegar to um, finish this. And uh, like a um, fourth of a teaspoon of black pepper or more to taste. And then when we are about to serve it, we will add some chopped, fresh chopped parsley. I will just uh, do it by sight here, some black pepper. And we turn off the heat. We'll just let it 
sit for a few minutes and I will prepare a bowl and try it. Let's put some soup in this bowl. It uh, smells really, really good. I think it's a wonderful combination. And so now the last touch here is to add a little bit of uh, finely, finely chopped parsley. This is fresh parsley. If you wanted to use cilantro, you could do that or thyme. And let's go to try this wonderful soup. Well, sadly, we have arrived at the end. It's been nice to spend time with you in this cooking uh, de demo. Here is the polenta with a little bit of uh, lemon juice. And um, I'm going to give it a try. I always love polenta, so let's see. This is a perfect bite with all the greens and some beans. Mmm, mm. I could eat polenta every day for every meal. Mmm, it is a very satisfying food. Go ahead and try it. Let me know what you think. You can write in the comments. You can send me an email. And now, well, my email is uh, info at plantemas.com if you'd like to, to have that email. And here is the cabbage and white bean soup. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And this is a perfect mixture. We're eating our greens, like Dr. Esselstyn recommends for our heart health. We're eating our beans for the fiber and um, all the nutrition that beans bring, and um, especially the protein that it has, and uh, so and everything else that's in it. Besides, it's delicious. Mm. I hope you will try it. Mm. I invite you to to visit my YouTube channel at plantemas.com and subscribe. I do a lot of cooking demos and I invite you to visit my website and join the seven day program which is really a unique experience. Everybody who takes it is absolutely delighted. We have the best of times. It's short. We don't. You don't have to be reading a lot of books and, and you know a lot of videos. It's just a very practical program. I hope you will try it. You will not be disappointed. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you next month in my next uh, cooking demo here uh, with Chef AJ live. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye.